All right, let's go, Tokubi. Tokubi, use scary face to lower its speed. Toka. Wait, 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 wait. Are, are you kidding me? This is supposed to scare me? Like, like really? It looks like it started to hatch, and halfway through, he just said, F*** it, I'm an egg. You, you gotta be kidding me. Tokubi. What is going on guys, this is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And welcome to our first Halloween special. In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 scariest things in Pokemon of all time. And just a little disclaimer before we start, this is my opinion. Also, some of these facts are theories, some are real, and some are creepypastas. But I'll leave that for you to decide on what's what. So with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's get started. Starting off this list, we have Pokerus. Now most people know that the origins for some Pokemon originate from outer space, the deep sea, and even volcanoes. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, because there's an origin for one Pokemon that is far, far darker. Enter the Pokerus. It is a rare virus that spreads from one Pokemon to the other. This virus increases their strength and rapidly advances their growth. This is a real thing. While not many people know about it, Pokerus has been around as far back as Generation 2. In fact, it only has a 3 in 65,000 chance of infecting your Pokemon, so it is a very rare occurrence. Like we all know, Pokerus is transmitted between Pokemon to Pokemon that are near each other. But what if it infected a human? Meet Kadabra, the pinnacle of an infected human. In the Pokemon game Fire Red, its Pokedex entry states, It happened one morning. A boy with extrasensory powers awoke from his bed and transformed into a Kadabra. The thought of being turned into a Pokemon is scary, because at any moment, you could be attacked and captured by a trainer. But that's only number 10. Coming at number 9, we have Buried Alive. Now back in the beta stages of Pokemon Red and Green, a rumored final boss was supposed to appear on top of the Pokemon Tower. This boss was represented as a living corpse crawling out of his grave. In order to reach this mysterious boss, you would have to climb through all the floors of the tower. The player would then come across a very unique headstone. Upon clicking the headstone, a battle would initiate and the Buried Alive final boss would begin. The sprite of this abomination was a decaying human corpse, trying to crawl its way out of the ground. This corpse was programmed to have two white hands, a Gengar and a Muk. Since the programmers never went through with this chilling battle, defeating Buried Alive resulted in a game crash. But if you lost, something much, much sinister would happen. A black screen would appear. The corpse would shout, finally, fresh meat, followed by several lines of gibberish. Suddenly, the player would find himself being dragged down into the ground, with the game over text hovering over him. In the background, you could almost see your character being devoured by this zombified creature. Some say there are glitches in the released games to initiate the battle. Others say that there's hat games floating around with this evil boss. Which is very frightening. For number 8, we have Giovanni's Plan. Now what if the criminal mastermind, Giovanni, was actually trying to save the world rather than taking over it? As seen in the first Pokemon movie, none of the scientists who created Mewtwo realized how powerful he would become. After being killed by this monstrous Pokemon, word spread quickly and Giovanni was the first to be on call. Taking this Pokemon in, he isolated him in a mecha suit to control his powers. After that, his plan for destroying this evil creature began. Giovanni's first mission was to capture the Sylph Scope so that he could discover Ghost-type Pokemon, which are, of course, super effective against Psychic Pokemon. This would allow Giovanni to weaken Mewtwo so that he could capture him. No trainer on Earth at the time had the power to weaken this legendary Pokemon enough to capture him. Not even Red, because at the time, he was still training his Pokemon in order to complete the Pokédex and become champion. Knowing this, Giovanni soon learned of a Pokeball that could capture any Pokemon without failure. So in order to stop Mewtwo once and for all, he and his crew went to steal this new technology. Although this is just a theory, the unopened eye has been opened to this chilling tale of Giovanni. Coming at number 7, we have the sad story of Ash Ketchum. Now we all know who Ash is, the young boy who never ages that is set on a journey to become a Pokemon master. But what if I told you there's a much darker story to Ash? The real story of Ash begins with a notorious bike accident that happened on episode 1. This accident caused Ash to go into a deep coma, with numerous subconscious characters that we see. This theory would be evident of why Ash never ages, and many more chilling manifestations. 
The fantasy that we see and Ash is experiencing are steps to the awakening out of the coma. This would explain why Ash is never recognized when entering a new region. I mean, who wouldn't recognize a person who has placed in the top in multiple Pokemon leagues and has conquered the battle frontier? Along with that, everyone that Ash meets is an aspect of himself. Brock represents Ash's lust. However, since Ash can experience that in his current state, Brock must never succeed. Gary is what Ash wants to be. Without Gary, what would push Ash into being a better trainer? And finally, Team Rocket are Ash's demons, always trying to sin in every opportunity they have. The story of Ash is a sad one, but it's just a theory to wonder in the back of your mind. Next up at number 6, we have Yamask. This abomination of a Pokemon was once a human being that died many years ago. How Yamask came into existence begins with the spirits of the dead, who rose from the graves below them. They transform into a Pokemon holding their face with only their tail. That's right, the mask you see this Pokemon is holding is actually their face. Not only that, it retains the memories of his former self. You probably thought Cubone's life was terrible, into the life of Yamask. On top of that, Yamask is a ghost type Pokemon. So at any moment, one of these monstrous things could be behind you right now. The irony is very cruel because trainers who once trained their Pokemon to fight others are now paying the price. Is this the fate of what happens to Pokemon trainers? I'll leave that for you to decide. Coming at number 5, we have the Poison Ghost Girl. The story of Eterna City is rather simple. It's just a normal town with normal people, but the history behind the old Chateau is a completely different story. Known as being a haunted mansion filled with ghost Pokemon, the old Chateau holds a horror story within it. Gardenia, the gym leader of Eterna City, had a sister. Her sister was originally supposed to be the gym leader of Eterna. That's when the jealousy started to build with Gardenia. Gaining all the attention and recognition throughout the city, the ghost girl soon had a different fate in store for her, because she would soon be betrayed by someone she loves. After Gardenia's jealousy hit the bowling point, she poisoned her sister along with her grandpa. Instantly regretting it, it was already too late to turn back. This is the reason why you come across a ghost girl roaming the rooms along with an antidote in one of the trash cans. At one point in the game you find Gardenia in front of the house claiming she's too busy to go in, but the truth is, she's too scared to go back. For number 4, we have the Lavender Town Syndrome. Now back when Pokemon Red and Green were just released in Japan, a very strange sickness was floating around. Rumors started to spread that these illnesses only occurred after the children reached Lavender Town. This town had extremely high frequencies that could be very dangerous psychologically to the young ear. Further studies show that only the young children could hear this frequency because their ears were more sensitive. Due to Lavender Town, at least 200 children were supposedly very ill. Those who suffered the least had severe migraines after listening to this cursed tone. Although Lavender Town sounds different now, this mass eruption was caused by the first copies of the Pokemon games. Because after the incident, the programmers fixed the traumatizing music so that it would have a lower frequency, and since, the children were no longer affected by it. One video popped up in 2010 analyzing the audio of the first copies Lavender Town. When played, the software created images of the unknown near the end of the audio. This raised controversy, since unknown didn't appear until Generation 2. The unknown when spelt out, translated to leave now. This is just a myth though, but it's still a chilling thought. Coming at number 3, we have Magikarp. Now if there's one Pokemon you should be afraid of, it's definitely this pathetic fish. Said in the Pokedex entry from Pokemon Ruby, Magikarp is a pathetic excuse for a Pokemon. It is only capable of flopping and splashing. Only splashing, more like splashing in your blood. Well let me tell you, this Pokedex entry is wrong because this pathetic fish can kill you in an instant. Magikarp is based off the Silver Carp, which is a fish that can leap up to 10 to 15 feet. Although it doesn't say specifically how high Magikarp is capable of jumping, it is said in the Pokemon Platinum Pokedex that a Magikarp that has lived for many years can leap over a mountain using Splash. According to Vsauce 3, a Magikarp that weighs 22 pounds falling from 8200 feet has the power to break through concrete, weighing the equivalent of 881 pounds. Now let's think about that, Magikarps are everywhere, there isn't a body of water that doesn't inhabit this fish. So with all these Magikarps having the power to jump over a mountain and being able to exert enough force to break through concrete, at any moment you can be squashed by this pathetic excuse for a Pokemon. So better watch out next time you're walking outside. For runner up, we have Red's Death. Now what if I told you that Red went to Mount Silver not to train his Pokemon, but as a place of solitude, to escape the mental anguish Kanto has brought to him? Professor Oak congratulating him on his victory against his grandson was just an act for the media. But behind the scenes, Oak scolded Red for dethroning his grandson. 
Even Red's mother eventually agreed with Professor Oak's opinion. She thought that Red was cruel and heartless for doing such a thing to Blue, especially after killing his Raticate. Word of what Red did spread quickly throughout Kanto. Everyone began to hate him for what he did to Blue. Knowing this, Red quickly grew emotionally unstable and fled to Mount Silver. His only friends at that point were his Pokemon. Eventually, Red died on top of Mount Silver. The freezing cold claimed the lives of him and his Pokemon. Although many people reject this theory, the evidence is there. Notice when he defeats Red as gold, he disappears after the battle. This was possible because he is in fact a wandering ghost still trying to be a Pokemon master. Defeating him finally puts him at peace. For now. And for the creepiest thing in Pokemon, in my opinion, is... Sabrina. In the original Pokemon anime, on episode 24, we learn that Sabrina has very powerful psychic abilities. As a child, Sabrina was obsessed with increasing her powers. So much so, she transformed her own mother into a doll. Her father tried to stop her while he could, but her powers were too overwhelming, so there was no use. This conflict caused Sabrina to split into two people. One being the strong Pokemon trainer that is always causing trouble, and the other being the lonely girl who desires to only make friends. The doll that Sabrina always holds in her hands represents her true self before she rejected her own heart. Sabrina's childlike twin likes to turn people into dolls so that she can play with them and make friends. Seeing this episode when I was little gave me nightmares because this evil laugh while turning Brock and Missy into dolls was just plain scary. Here, check it out. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with Sabrina, and that is why I chose Sabrina for number 1. And there you have it, the top 10 scariest things in Pokemon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like if you did, I appreciate it a ton, and also if you're enjoying the channel be sure to subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for fan interactions, video updates, and other cool stuff, follow me at Ethan Dobbs. And for the question of the day, what is the scariest thing in Pokemon to you? Be sure to leave it down below in the comments, I can't wait to see you guys have in mind. And I'll see y'all next time, see ya. Hey dude, hey dude, let me in, let me in man, I'm a fairy. Don't you believe in fairies?